Okay. So welcome everyone to the virtual library session for English 12, uh, Professor Ellis's class for fall 2021. I am sharing the screen with you. This is the screen for the online library guide for student research when you need to do research for uh, Professor Ellis for anything in her class. And this uh, online library guide, I hope everyone knows how to get here. Uh, if you look on my screen, you're gonna see where the address bar is, right? You're gonna see uh, this address, uh, library.kvcc.cuny.edu uh, forward slash and all that rest of it, right? Um, an easier to remember address I have is tinyurl.com, right, uh, slash, and then it's KB Library Online. You see, as I'm typing, no space, just KB Library Online. And when you press on enter after that, there you go, you'll get to the landing page, which was what we were looking at before. And uh, this is the library guide. And if you go to the very bottom, you'll see my contact information. Uh, that's me, Wendy Chu, and my office number, my email address. Uh, you can contact me anytime uh, after the session. Uh, if you have anything about the library, you know, you wanna know, Okay, can we come to the library? Uh, how do we borrow a book at this point? Uh, how do we find you know, resources for this topic or that topic? Uh, just you know, drop me an, an, uh, an email, call me, uh, and this is my contact information. So right up top on the library guide, you're gonna see three steps. Okay, we're gonna run the very first step for first time users. Um, and then we'll go over a little bit of, um, uh, you know, the class page under step two. And then step three, I leave for students to, you know, find a time to do on your own. It has a lot of uh, the tools uh, for research, for, um, you know, helping you out when you think of the library. Um, it may be for this semester, it may be for, you know, after the semester when you are taking other classes. Uh, for example, if you're taking psychology, you know, nursing, uh, your majors, you may need to find resources for those subjects. You can always come back to this library guide and take step three, get down to subject research guides. And this is where I have a listing of the subjects and you'll see the different library recommendations in terms of databases, uh, you know, e-resources for those subjects right here under step three. And you'll see the other uh, subpages of the step, all of them here for, again, to help you when you are uh, doing research. So with that, let's go to uh, step one for first time users. Um, it is a very short module. Uh, you'll see, I hope everyone sees here, Library Basics for Distance Learning Students in Fall 2021. Okay, pretty much if uh, you've not been to the library at all, um, and uh, it wouldn't be surprising because many students might be starting college at this point uh, without you know, having visited the, the campus, uh, everything's now so online. Um, so the first thing about uh, the library, uh, I'm gonna run this video. Uh, it's very short. It's just a way of seeing at least what, what the library looks like from afar, you know, how to recognize the building and kind of what, what inside the different collections are, where they are in the building. If, if hopefully it would entice you to come to the campus uh, and then when you are on campus to come to the library to, to visit us. Okay, so hold on, let me just turn on this video. It's very short.
Okay, so there you go. As I said, it was very short. Um, and uh, what what we have at this point, a little earlier, perhaps even you know two weeks ago, um, the way to come to 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 the well, not the, just the campus, but to the library, you would need to make an online reservation. Um, because it's a way of tracking people coming onto the campus. But we've been progressing, um, you know, in a, uh, so positively, you know, uh, for, for you know, the last couple of weeks that uh, there's a change in policy, not just, you know, for the library, but for much of the campus. At this point, uh, you don't need to make any more online reservations, which is, you know, a kind of tedious step. You know, you don't think of, okay, I have to make a reservation. Uh, to borrow a book, but that's what was happening even two weeks before. Um, at this point, we really just need to, to be sure that you are vaccinated. And if you want information about it, this is what the slide is. If you click on the, um, the, the link here, it's going to tell you, okay, uh, what you need to know as far as providing that proof the verification of vaccination. I think it's the, the CUNY pass that students need to get. Anyone that wants to come to the campus that they have to show uh, the guards at the, at the entrance. So this link is gonna give you information about it. But otherwise, once you get onto the campus, you are free to you know, come to the library, uh, make use of the study areas, you know, go and borrow books. Uh, you know, do, do what we've always done, you know, before this pandemic. So I feel, you know, good that much of, of, of our regular flow is slowly coming back in. Um, so the next slide is the general library website. Now, this online library guide is meant for students in this class. You know, it has a lot of the library recommendations for the class. Um, but for the, for the rest of the people, uh, for the Kingsborough community, um, faculty, staff, other students, uh, they, all of us, can go to the general library website. And this slide tells you how to get there. You'll see that there is, you know, uh, Route 1, which is pretty much just to find quick links, you know, quick links anywhere on the Kingsborough website. And this little video shows you how to get to that quick links, right, to find the library option. So that's route one. Route two is right here from this online library guide. It's going to show you, you'll see it under step two. You see go to library website. That's another way of getting to the general library website. And again, the general library website will show you a lot of the services you know, the, um, the regular library services uh, open to everyone of the campus. So think of, you know, that link uh, as something that you may want to bookmark, right, uh, on your PC uh, for, again, for much longer than just this one semester. It's going to be for, you know, um, the time that you spend as a student uh, at Kingsborough because you will be coming to the library to do research, definitely. Okay, so that's what the slide is. Um, now, this is a very important part of, um, at this point, library access, right? So um, the students of this class, you know, you are doing everything online. Um, and, you know, when you are trying to access the library, whether it's the library website or this online library guide, um, you will need to know the first thing about access, and that is that CUNY login, okay, because um, it is the same login that you have, uh, you know, the username and the password, that is, uh, for a lot of the systems. A lot of the systems at this point, you know, if you think of Blackboard, if you think of um, CUNY first, you know, CUNY first, if you remember, it's the system that you go in to enroll uh, into all the different classes, right? If you want to add a class, if you want to change a class or withdraw, 
uh, everything is done on CUNY first, right? And that also requires you to have pretty much the same um, login information, that username and password. It is the universal uh, login. And it is the same for the library. Okay, so anytime that you are trying to, um, let me get to the next slide. Uh, when you're trying to access a book, a database, right? Anything electronic from home. You know, you're going to be using the library catalog and then you're going to open up a book and it happens to be an ebook. So what you'll see on your computer will be, you know, what I have here on this left side with the laptop, right? You're going to see something like web applications login and it's going to ask you for the username and password. That's what I was talking about on the previous slide, the CUNY login. So, um, and I hope that students know what they are, what the username and password are. Generally, it is, I'll go back to the previous slide, you know, it is your first name, dot, last name, and two digits, right? The two digits of your ample ID number. And what is the ample ID number? It shows up on your college ID card. So if you look at the slide, the last two digits would be three, four in this case, right? Three, four. So it would be whatever your first name is, that last name, and then three, four, or whatever it is for um, your uh, ample ID. So um, that is the username that uh, usually it follows that structure. And then the password would be whatever you first set, um, you know, for yourself when you activate that account. And um, if you don't remember, you know, a lot of people at this point, there are just so many passwords and sometimes we forget to write down what they are. If you run into that situation, don't worry. OK, uh, even when you are prompted to enter that information right on the screen, you see, you know, uh, links, all all of them right under, you know, the login, um, you know, things like forgot password, forgot username, manage your account. All these links are there so that they help you to walk through the process of setting it or resetting it again. Okay, and uh, here's also contact information. If you want somebody to do it for you, right? It is the student help desk, IT student help desk. This is their email address and their phone number. You can also click on this button on my slide. It's gonna create the, the ticket uh, with IT so that again, uh, they'll ask you, okay, you know, what is your ample ID number? What is your name? And they'll look into your account and um, provide you at, with that detail, if not to reset it for you. Okay, so if you want somebody to do it for you, this is the contact information. If you think you could do it yourself, just click on the links when you're prompted, you know, and uh, you'll pretty much, you know, be taken to um, a new window asking you for uh, account information. Uh, so this is new and we have many different ways to reach a librarian uh, or the library, right? You can call us. Uh, this is our reference desk phone number, right? During library hours, you can email us right uh, this is our email address you go you'll just you know click on the button and you'll get the email address and um you know if you happen to be in the building of course you could just see us right there sitting in front of you uh, i'll be you know sometimes right there at the desk uh to help you guys out um but what's new is you could also chat with us instantly now this is so helpful because it is not like, you know, when you're sending an email and you have to wait for a reply, this is instant. If I click, and of course the time now is um, 6.25. So um, the library, actually the library should still be open and there'll be a librarian sitting there. So you see, I'm opening up a chat session. Uh, I, all I have to do is just, you know, put in my name and then click on start chat and somebody in the CUNY network, 
a librarian will instantly respond to you. So if you have a question about the library hours, you know, can I can I still come to the library at this hour? You'll see, you know, well, well, somebody is going to answer. Yes, you can come. No, we are closing in the next 15 minutes. You'll get an, uh, an answer instantly. So this is very helpful. Um, new for us for Kingsborough this semester. So many different ways to reach the library. Uh, and finally, for this module, right here are our hours. Uh, we have eight to seven for Monday uh, to Thursday, eight to five for Friday, and we are even open on the weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, 10 to three. Uh, so, you know, we are open seven days. If you need to use the library, you don't no longer, as I said, you don't have to make those online reservations anymore. Just come by. Uh, be sure to get, you know, that, that, that um, CUNY pass, right, to pass the, the guards at the gate. Once you're there, you know, come and we are open. We are also open on the you know, different platforms. You'll see us on TikTok or Instagram. So you know, there's a lot of activity on those uh, platforms. Um, so that's it for the module. Uh, pretty much to you know, give you a summary of what's different this semester and the essentials that students need to know when they uh, do library re research from home. Okay, I'm just gonna get back to the very first slide. And here is where, you know, does anyone have a question about any part of the module uh, as far as, you know, um, access, um, you know, um, anything about the library coming to the library? Let's uh, give ourselves like, you know, a moment to see if there's anything. And by the way, actually, there's also chat, uh, chat uh, on Zoom. So if you feel like um, uh, it's better for me to type in, uh, you know, text a message, uh, open up chat and, you know, send a message. I'll also be reading chat as we go through the presentation. So um, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, I'm not hearing anything uh, and I'm not seeing anything on chat. Uh, we will, okay, all right. So we will move on to step two. Step two, right, you'll see uh, up top, step two. And when I hover on step two, uh, a few uh, pages emerge. You know, the first link is, of course, that general library website. You can get there with the first link. And then you'll see other class pages, right? So these are the different classes coming to use the library guide. Um, one of the classes you'll see right in the middle, go to English 12, Ellis, Race and Identity. That's your class page. Okay, so, you know, if you have um, an essay to write, right, uh, or uh, a paper coming up, right, uh, for the class, uh, come to the, the class page first, click, and you're here. So here's the header for the class page, Online English 12 Library Research Guide, Professor Ella's, uh, the theme, race and identity, right, and again, you get my um, contact information, right, just in case, uh, you can, you know, again, um, Okay, great. Um, you could, you know, email me about anything. Um, and then, oh, look at this, right? Here is the library session that we have right now. Okay, and um, this red box, since we are doing a recording, um, when the recording is done, I'm gonna post the recording uh, right here in this box. So if you come back to the class page, and you look at this box, you're going to see that uh, recording on YouTube. OK, so, you know, just so that, um, you know, if you can remember, you know, what I uh, explained about a certain database, you can always come back to the recording. Or if you know, you know, someone who's not able to attend this session uh, who may benefit from the recording later, 
let, the, let them know that the recording is here so that they could, you know, come and just um, watch it themselves. So that's what uh, will be put here. So let's examine what the class page is. You'll see as we scroll down, the first section is on recommended databases, right? Uh, you, you'll see under uh, recommended databases, a few tabs, right? That tells you the sort of databases that I'm recommending depending on what you need. I have here for background and concepts, right? The Gale Virtual Reference Library. If I want to know about the kinds of um, social issues, right? Uh, let's say to find the topic, right? Uh, for an essay, this is also a very good database, opposing viewpoints and context. Um, the next uh, tab for scholarly uh, studies, let's say that we have, you know, a certain topic in mind. And Professor Ellis says, I want you to find some scholarly sources right, maybe from a journal, from a peer reviewed journal on that topic, race and identity. You may want to, you know, get into academic search complete and look for peer review scholarly articles in this database, right? So that is the database for that. Uh, or the last tab for newspapers and magazines. Uh, I have a couple here, right? This is more general. InfoTrack newsstand for all the newspapers um, uh, for you know national, international, local, all all kinds of newspapers. Uh, the second one is for mainly for New York, New York State newspapers, right? So if you want to go into New York Times, or New York Post, um, get into this database and you'll find all those uh, the newspaper articles. Um, difference uh, between getting into a database here and you know just going to New York Times, the website for newspaper articles. Well, this one you're going to just access free, right? If you go to the New York Times, it may require you to uh, purchase a digital subscription, right, to a lot of those articles. So um, anything that you get from the library, you know, that you are uh, coming in with the CUNY login, uh, you don't have to pay anything, right? And that's why people do uh, library research, you know, because the library has paid for these databases for you already. Uh, you don't need to worry about, you know, encountering, you know, something like a paywall when you click on, you know, a link to an article or some such. Uh, because as long as you're getting it through the library and you know that CUNY login, it's going to be free. So that is the first section on databases. You're going to see a green button here. It says click for video tutorial, right? If you are not sure, like, okay, I don't know what to do about these databases. I'm seeing them, but how do I access, right? And that's what the tutorial is. I mean, of course, we're running this session, so I'm, you know, going through the whole thing in detail. But again, for people who uh, are not here today for the session, uh, this is what the tutorial is. You just click, and it opens up a very short video, much like that promo that I ran before. But this time, it would be on just that section, how to get into a database. So, you know, if I turn this on, you'll see it's about two minutes. This video explains how to get into a database on your online class page. Okay, so I'm going to pause that and close the tutorial. So you'll see a tutorial button, something like this for, you know, every section on the class page so that you know what to do with that section. Right. Um, as we come down, you're going to see the middle section, recommended books and ebooks. I have um, five books, right, that I'm recommending on the page. You'll see, I hope that people recognize this book, uh, for instance, right? Um, you'll see that usually, you know, there's the book cover and the title link. Um, let's get in it, okay? 
let's see if we can, um, you know, find this book, right, in the library right now. Um, I'm going to click on it, right? Again, I can click on the book cover. It doesn't matter. Uh, it opens up immediately. Okay, here is the color of water, right? And uh, if I look up top, it is the library catalog, right? Here is the search box, the library catalog, um, you know, with all the search options. Um, and then here is the record of the item that I just opened up, the color of water. Uh, what does this mean? If you look under the title, you're gonna usually see the descriptions. Anytime that you see available at Kibi Library Reserve, Kibi Library Reference, Kibi Library Stacks, you know, that kind of description. I'll click on this link as well so that you know. That means that you need to come to the library. It is a print copy. And for this book, uh, it is part of two different collections in the library. It is part of the reserve collection on the second floor. I can click open and find out, okay, how many copies do I have? It says we have just one copy of this book, okay, in the reserve. I can click back. And I also see that it's part of the stacks collection. That is a book that can be taken out of the library. I can click open to see what the situation is. There are, well, there were two copies of this, but it looks like one of them, right? It says lost. Usually somebody's borrowed the book and, um, you know, maybe has not returned the item. And since it's been borrowed since 2018, at this point, it's been declared lost. So, you know, we're going to have to do something about this copy. But, there, you know, there is another copy on the shelf, right, um, in the building right now. Altogether, two copies of this book, if anyone's interested in borrowing it. Okay, so you can always tell just by uh, looking at the record of the book. I'm going to come back up here, right? Because in addition to the print copies, there's another description. It says available online. And that's the kind of link that I like to see when I do research from home, right? Especially when it's an online class. Because when I see this link, and I'm going to click on this link, it brings me down to, you see now, the section of the page that shows you how to access the book instantly, all right? This is an e-format, electronic format. Um, it has one collection, the Internet Archive. So if I click on this, it brings me to, well, the platform for it. Um, something special with Internet Archive, before you read this book, you have to sign up. If you don't already have an account with Internet Archive, it is, by the way, a free account. You just have to sign up. Um, you know, I, I hope people are familiar with this procedure at this point. You know, everything that you're doing um, on the different platforms, whether, you know, you're talking about social media, even um, you have to sign up with a username and password. You could use your CUNY login if you like. Right. Once you sign up, you will be able to read the color of water on this platform right here. I can, you know, pretty much get a preview of the book, you know, make it larger a little bit. Um, right. I could get a preview, but I wouldn't be able to read the entire book until I, um, you know, create that account. Right. There you go use your free account to borrow this book, All right? So um, come back to the book record. Um, here it is available online. Um, you'll see, you know, if I come back to the class page, right? Here is the first book. Um, I'll open up another book so that you kind of see the difference. Here is mixing it up, right? Multiracial subjects. If I click on, that title, it shows me now 
Um, here's the book cover and the title. Right under the title, available online. Click on it. It brings me to, aha, uh -huh, two different collections. It's not Internet Archive like the first book. You see, this is the color of water, right? Here is the first book that we were opening up. Here, two different collections. Doesn't matter which collection, both have access to the book. And if I want to open this book, right, I could, you know, select either one. I'll, you know, click on the first one. And uh, let me just refresh because I was, you know, just logging in before. Um, there you go. Just give it a, 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 you know, a moment. It will take us to the prompt. I was using it just, you know, like uh, an hour ago. So at this point, you know, after like a timeout of maybe, you know, an hour or so, it's not going to retain that information. So um, it's come back to that prompt. The prompt that was shown on the slide uh, before, what is your username and password to get into the book, right? This is the point when, you know, hopefully everyone knows what to input. If you don't know because you forgot, you see, forgot password, forgot username, you know, you can click on the link. I'm going to, you know, click just so that you see. Right here is the CUNY login and a way of helping you uh, reset. Right. So, you know, what is that ample ID? Right. To continue. Right. This is going to help you to uh, remember. So, to come back, the prompt, I'm going to put in my own. Right. And once I input, this will be good for. You know, this whole time that I'm doing research in front of the computer, once I shut down the computer, right, or maybe wait another hour or so, well, it's going to come back to that same prompt. It's not going to retain the, the memory of the law again. So here's the book, mixing it up. And this is the way you read an ebook. Um, you'll scroll down to get the table of contents. Right. And, you know, if you're reading The Color of Water and, uh, you know, once you sign it up, reading it will be very much like what I have here on the screen. Right. The table of contents. And then you'll look down uh, to find the different chapters, issues and trends. Right. Um, American mixed race. You're going to see some um, stats if you're interested. You know, you click on chapter one and instantly it brings you to, you know, I, I hope people have um, experience with the ebooks um, because at this point it's all clicking, clicking, right? So here's chapter one and you can start reading. Um, if you're, you know, not sure, you can still navigate on the side panel. Like, oh, I want um, section two multiracial subjects. Right, okay. And then um, here's chapter three, right? And once I'm pretty sure this is where I wanna begin, I can do some customization, get rid of the side panel. And this is now, you know, uh, a bigger screen. I can make it bigger with um, the menu bar, right? Customizing it further, right? And as I'm reading, uh, there's a lot that I can do as a student, you know, as I'm reading it, uh, sometimes, you know, you feel like, oh, this sort of answers the question, you know, um, that we talked about in class, that Professor Ellis wants us to maybe, you know, uh, put in for the next class, right? If you do as a student, you may want to, on this platform, like highlight it, right? Okay. And sometimes, you know, you may want to add a note just to remind yourself, right? Like perfect for topic, right? You could do that. And it will remember, right? It will remember, um, you know, the, the highlight and that um, 
that note that you uh, set aside for yourself. Okay, so very nice uh, for students. If you have, you know, if you're, you know, doing research on this platform and you're reading a lot of books and a lot of chapters, um, just to to keep, you know, um, uh, I remember uh, bookmarking, you know, in print copies. But this is nice to have everything on the screen. Um, and of course, you know, if if you, um, you know, as you're reading the book, you realize. I, I actually want to save the chapter um, instead of, you know, coming back uh, through this channel, which is, you know, uh, you know, from the book record and then, you know, again, from the class page, all these, you know, extra steps I can on, you know, the menu bar, just do a PDF download, you see? Right, I click chapter download, the current chapter. Um, you know, you may want to set the MLA format and click on continue. And look how easy it is. It just created the PDF of the chapter. So if you have the PDF and the PDF is on your PC, you can access the PDF anytime without having to get through the whole collection, the library and all that, right? It's now saved forever on your PC, all right? So all very convenient uh, right on the menu bar for you on this platform. Um, some students ask, oh, wow, you know, this is, this is really nice. Uh, can I do like a full download, right? You see the first link. Uh, that's something I always want to cover for students. I don't recommend that you do full downloads um, because when you do a full download, you have to do some other steps, right? Steps including making sure that you have, um, you know, the app for this platform because you're going to be opening up that book exclusively on that platform. Um, I don't recommend it until, uh, you know, unless it's a book that you want to, you know, read from cover to cover. If it's a chapter, right, or a few chapters, do the chapter download instead. I'm going to close this and come back to the class page. I just opened up two books, right? This one and this one. You'll see opening up any of these books will be the same, right? You'll get to the record from the library catalog and you'll look for the link to the collection containing that book. Or you may find you decide if you want to come to the library to get the print copy if it happens to be on the shelf. So again, let's see if, uh, do we have any questions about, um, you know, opening an ebook or, you know, looking at the record of the book to, you know, um, see what kind of a book it is. Anyone with a comment about that? Anything that they don't understand with what we've just seen on the screen? Uh, <clears throat> uh, I have a question. Yes. Can we get any type of books? Is the options limited? Or? Excellent, excellent question. Okay, certainly I don't mean you only can use these five books that I'm re recommending. I recommend these books because they are um, in line with your class discussions, right? So, I mean, one way to get to other books, here is the book that we just opened up, mixing it up, right? You can look on the record of the book, right? And there are subject links, you see, right? And if you want to find related items from the library having to do with those subjects, right? You can just click. And here is doing library research, looking at the library catalog for those other items in the library having to do with that subject, okay? And here is 110 results. That's a lot. If you wanna say, okay, 110, um, I wanna find books, 
okay, from the 110. Well, you know, this is where you're going to do some filtering. And I'm going to look for resource type, open it up, and you'll see the different categories, right? I want books. So I'm going to click on books, filter in the books from the results, having to do racially mixed people in literature. There are still 52 results. So that is you have 52 books on this list. Right. And as I'm looking at the titles, I may say, hey, I want books that I can open up from home, like right now. I don't want to, you know, go to the library uh, to find the copies. Well, I can do another set of filter. You see full text online on the left, right? Limit to full text online. I'm going to turn that on apply the filter and now it's 47 books so for still 47 books that's a lot right on racially mixed uh, people in literature so i get to decide okay you know um i want this one or let's see book seven this is this is just what doing research is finding the best fit Right, so as I'm coming down home, oh, that's our book, right? The one that we just opened up. Okay, I'm gonna click on it. And ah, okay, this is how I would access the book, the collections. So you have right now, right? Uh, many different books that you can access, right? Just by going to the record of the recommendations. I come down here the very bottom of the page. And there is a search box. That's the library record, right? If I say I don't like the five books, I want to find something different. I want to find something on my own, right? Um, I can do that. I can say, you know what? I want to look for color of water. I want to see if there are books or items from a library having to do with the book, right? I'm going to, you know, type the keywords in and click on search. And there is, you know, we have the list of results and it's a lot, right? 9,500. Okay, so these items are from the different databases that we have. Um, as well as, you know, the, the print items. So once we look at the library catalog, um, make sure that you do some amount of filtering. Otherwise, you know, it, uh, you know, if you just dive into the first items, okay, on the first page, they may not be, you know, what you're looking for. You may want to, you know, this is where, as I said before, you decide resource wise right what are you looking for right there are a lot of items included in the library catalog you see articles right you see book chapters right entire books some multi uh, video uh, multimedia videos um you see images here there's a lot included uh for resource type Right, this is, you know, if I want um, books, right? This is where I filter and, oh, there we go. Color of water, that's the copy, right? And um, if I wanna say, wait, okay, I want a book, but I want a book currently on the shelf and not online, well, I can do that too. Now let's see the kind of, oh, we don't have a lot, right? If you want anything related to color of water that's not online, it's come down to these two items. Not a lot, right? The book itself and this other one, right? This is, uh, I hope people recognize it's another, a more recent title of the author, 2020, you are able to borrow this book. And I think you could also see it online too, look at this, 
right? Pro probably internet um, archive again uh, from the same platform. Right, so come back to the class page. Uh, you don't just have five books, you have everything from the library catalog if you use the, um, the search box. All right, I again, I include some of the um, relevant subject links. So if you're not sure what to input into the, uh, the search, uh, uh, search box, try some of the subject links. Passing, right? If you want to see what items are in the library having to do with passing, uh, race relations, psychological aspects, uh, you know, you can click on the link. It's going to get you to, you know, the list of results. Play around with the filtering so that you have exactly what you need sitting at home. Um, so all that right on the class page. Um, I hope that I answered your question. Um, any other questions about books and the library catalog? I don't have any more questions. No, thank you. Okay. Now, um, do I recommend the library catalog for every type of research? Nope. Because the library catalog um, has access to a lot of collections, a lot of databases. If you look at the list of databases that the library has at this point, you know, when you go to the general library website, you'll see databases, they reach like, you know, close to 200. So when you're doing a very simple, you know, keyword search, usually you get thousands and thousands of results. And if you are just doing very basic research, uh, this may be more advanced than, you know, what you need. Okay, unless you're doing a, a research intense project where, you know, you may be writing 10, you know, 10 plus pages and your professor wants you to bring at least, you know, like 20 sources for the paper, then you want to make sure that, you know, you see all the different kinds of um, items from you know, the databases. But if you're doing a simpler project, I rather that you go and begin from the very first section, recommended databases. It is better to go into one database uh, instead of you know just all the databases, right? Because when you're doing um, simple searching, um, let's use an example, right? Um, here is, if I want to understand some general concepts, right? This is the database to go into. Gale Virtual Reference Library. And again, I provide you with a little video on how to use uh, a certain tool, the Topic Finder tool in uh, the Gale uh, Reference Library. I'm going to click on the link to the, um, to the database. And look at that, I'm in the database already. Um, you know, no need to input again the CUNY login because, you know, we are still sitting in front of our computer. I'm going to go to the advanced search link and you'll see the option, right, um, on the bar. You know, we, we, there we go, topic finder. And I like to use the topic finder because it really shows me, you know, um, visualize of you know all the related items in this one database having to do with your keyword right let's say i want to understand um you know and and i do provide here some examples right you could put in any of these concepts right or maybe they you know you have other concepts that you want to get some background for right i'm going to use an example and put in racially mixed people and you'll see what you know i'm talking about when i use this tool and when i do it it presents okay right 
in two different uh, formats, either the tiles format or the wheel uh, on all those items in the database, this one database on uh, racially mixed people. How do I make use of it? I tend to like, you know, of course, some people may be comfortable with the tiles, right? You can, you know, identify like, oh, okay, uh, racially mixed people as an ethnic identity, right? I click and it brings me, you know, all the subcategories, right? And um, I can do it this way. I wanna show you the other way, the wheel. I like the wheel one a little better because it's like a pie. Uh, formation, right? And I can see the relation of all the different, you know, slices uh, for, you know, the subject. So let's say I'm interested in, you know, this little segment or slice of race, you know, again, related to what I just typed in racially mixed people. And it's going to tell you, oh, okay, the better places to visit in this database are you see the listings, right? And this is where I decide, oh, okay, let me get into racial, multiracial individuals or mixed race Americans. I click here and it brings me to, this is one database again, right? If I want to, um, you know, cover again, the background for any concept, any, topic, any keyword, right? You have open all the encyclopedias, the reference resources from this one database. And it's a pretty comprehensive uh, coverage, you see, right? It's about, as I see it, about four pages, three or four pages. Right. And if there's, you know, you may want to, um, as you're reading it, right, um, again, this is a library database. There's a lot that you can do. Uh, the tools are here. Um, usually, you know, I, I talk about like if you have a Google Drive, you could save this entry to, to Google Drive, much like, you know, when you're opening that ebook. Right, you could do a chapter uh, download as a PDF. It's like all those, you know. At this point, it's it's a given. You know, you can do that. Um, but I always mention uh, one other tool in a library database for students, and that is the citation tool. Right, as you're reading it. Right, as you're reading this entry, and oh, oh, oh there you go. Here is the part where you know you could highlight. And it's like, oh, okay, want to use it for the essay paragraph two. You know, again, right? You could you could do all that uh, for for student research. Um, but to bring us back to that citation tool, um, if I'm going to use that paragraph, make sure that you have the citation. And here is, you know, I click on citation and uh, I hope everyone sees, right? Maybe I can make it smaller. There you go. So more of the page shows up. Um, different citation formats, right? Usually for English, MLA. So at this point, here is the citation. I can do a select and now do a copy and paste, right? If you happen to have Word open on the, you know, on your PC, and that's one way to get the citation. Another, you, you, you see export to, right? So if you have the, the Google, uh, you know, your Google account, you may want to just, you know, export it along with, you know, like saving the entire article to that drive. There's a lot that you can do, right? Um, you can you can email you see send to download all the features right here on the screen um and as you're you know writing about let's say mixed race right um here's one entry 
you may want to get some of the related items in other encyclopedias in this database. And they are right here on the side, on the side panels. Usually they're on the left or on the right, but you'll see the related links. It is very useful to have these links because again, it depends on how much research or how many sources your professor wants you to find. You know, a lot of assignments begin with, I want you to find a couple of sources. And, you know, your professor could be very specific. Uh, I don't want you to use anything outside the library. I only want academic sources, right? So anything that you're getting from the library, from this database, right? These are academic sources. Sometimes your professor could be even more specific and not just academic sources. I want you to find, I don't want you to get even, you know, a reference book. I want you to get scholarly sources, right? From uh, peer reviewed journal articles. Well then, you know, if that is the case, I'm gonna open up, right? for scholarly studies, get into academic search complete. And here is a new database, right? It is an EBSCO database. And you'll recognize, oh, okay, what is this platform? Okay, um, all the platforms, they all look different. The colors are different, the layout is different, but I hope people recognize Whichever database you're in, you will see the search box. You have to enter into the search box what you're looking for. So if I use the same words as before, um, let's say racially mixed, right? Or, you know, mixed, oops, race, right? You could, you know, throw around uh, the keywords until, you know, as I see it in this uh, the database, some of the additional options, right? Mixed race identity, right? Let's say I want to, you know, select that or maybe make use of all the different possibilities of the mixed races, right? So if I, let's say, use that and search in this one database, Right, it is very good for finding scholarly, uh, you know, peer reviewed items. Why? Because you see on the side in this database, right? I'm gonna have to do some filtering again. I'm gonna, you know, filter in scholarly peer reviewed journals, right? I want another filter just like the, you know, full. Uh, text available when you're doing the catalog search. I'm going to do the same thing here. Full text. All right. And you, you still have a lot, you know, uh, in one database. That's a lot of scholarly articles in one database. Okay. And, you know, I may want, you know, to um, set the range maybe the last 10 years, there you go, on it, okay? And all of these items now are peer review scholarly journal articles having to do with racially mixed people. All right, so um, that is the reason that I don't recommend jumping into, let's say, the library catalog, because it is better to familiarize yourself with one database first, you know, when you're beginning library research, when you're using the college uh, library, you know, with all the different databases, get familiar with searching within one database, and get familiar with, you know, some of the sources that you're seeing. Um, as I'm looking at it, right, going down, and looking at the items, you may want to maybe put in, you know, here, I, you know, I'm just doing a very basic search for, uh, 
a racially mixed right population um what's better is to have to add in an additional dimension to that topic right to really get your items because your academic your scholarly sources so far it's still 2700 that's a lot what is it about mixed race that you're interested in if you're interested in identity as an issue for them right identity development or maybe not maybe it has to do with what family life right maybe not maybe it has to do with their careers right career choices which aspect are you interested in? So that may be good for the second search, right? You put that in and it is helpful. If I just do identity, let's see what kind of um, studies have been done on um, identity formation for racially mixed people. Ah, right? peer review scholarly uh, articles, right? Here are the studies done. And now it's a lot easier for me to just go into the annual review of sociology, this one uh, journal for this study. If I click in, all right, here's the record. Okay, and usually it provides me with, uh, you know, um, a summary understanding of what the study is about, right? And I decide if, you know, I, I want to include the study in the essay, right? If your professor is very specific about scholarly sources, right? And this is where I decide, can I do it, right? And if you want to actually read uh, the article itself, here is you know, on the side, always a link to the full text, right? And- um, I just wanna say something, Professor. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I use this um, to look for my um, research paper for my anthropology class. Okay. And one thing that pops up- Wait, wait, me, hold on. Did you say you use this as in this database, Academic Search yes. Complete? Yes, I use this data okay. database for it. Mm -hmm. and one of the topics I I search for is systemic racism okay. um, in the United States. And when I click on it, some of the articles I, I get, it tells me to um, find it at CUNY, when it says find in CUNY. And I click on find in CUNY, and it takes me somewhere else and somewhere else is where I have to eventually pay for the article. Okay. Now, All of these being is PDF, which is good. Some of the files I, I found is PDF, but then mm -hmm. some of them are not PDF files. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so what's happening is um, when you look on the side, right? You, I, I don't know if you're still seeing my screen. On yeah. the left yeah. side, yeah. I selected full text. Full text. Yeah. Make sure that you set the, the full text on because if you don't set the full text, let's just, you know, uh, unset it so that you kind of see. Um, yeah. And sometimes, you know, on a list, you will see, you know, I think that's what you are talking about. Find it at CUNY. Let's come back. You know, here is this example. Number seven has yeah. this button, find it at CUNY. What this means is, okay, from this listing, because I did not set the full text, it's going to provide you with a lot more items than you can actually get the full content for, a lot more items. And those items may not be in this one database, okay? But EBSCO is much larger than just academic search complete, right? It's going to grab everything from outside this database and then you decide if you want to access those items without the full text. And that's why it's going to have to, you know, get you through another method. And this is the other method, right? I would, you know, when you're doing research, get rid of all of those, find it at CUNY first by using full text to get a clean listing of only the full text items. Find it at CUNY is only for, again, 
this is more for the advanced users out there. They have a listing. They are really looking to widen their search. They want to see everything there is. Think of, you know, a professor, right, who's going to publish and wants more sources, right? Think of, you know, a lot of the field researchers. They want to have the net as wide open as possible because once they have, you know, let me just get rid of full text again. Okay, once I have, you know, these items, I'm just going to look at every channel that I can, whether it's through this one database or other databases and sometimes all of CUNY to have the entire CUNY library system work for me to get access to this one item. I'm, you know, forgetting everything about, okay, this is just one database. I'm just going to widen my search as much as possible. If you are in that situation, go for it. But, you know, if you're doing a very simple um, essay, right, two or three pages, you don't need to, you know, take those extra steps, right? Then just turn on full text. Get rid of those items so that you don't run into the question of, oh, okay, what, what's going on? I, you know, I, I, I got the paywall, right? I'm not supposed to see the paywall. And, you know, um, I think we ran into it, you know, with this little item that was not supposed to be there because I did set the full text. So this is an issue with EBSCO before that they have to fix. That, that item, you know, went past the, the paywall uh, for some reason. Anyway, I, I hope that answered uh, your question about it. Yes, thank you very much. No problem. Um, any other questions about the database? It is gonna be very much you looking at the search boxes and inputting those keywords. You put in systemic racism, you know, sometimes you may want to put in structural, right? Or, you know, maybe you want to go to the Gale Virtual Reference Library to get some background coverage on that term too, right? You could put in systemic racism in the Gale Virtual Library and see what, you know, some of the links are. So two databases, okay? Um, this one and this one, right? That we just um, use. Um, other questions about databases? Let me check. Anyone? Can you post a link in the chat, Professor, for the um two link to the for the two libraries, Gail and well, I use the other one, so Gail and Goto. Yes. Goto? yes There's Gail. Thank you. All right. Uh, I everything is right on the class page. You just okay. decide, okay, you know, um, here is again, right? That's the class page. And it is the section on recommended databases. And you'll see here is the Gale Virtual Reference Library link. And then if I want to do scholarly studies, I click on that tab, academic search complete shows up. Right. And, um, you know, you have um, for newspapers and magazines, you know, you just want to do maybe a newspaper search, right, for items related to systemic racism. Uh, recently, right, the last couple of years, right, that would be an interesting search in the, the, the newspapers, right? You may want to come here, right? You can click and get into the database, input your keywords. And again, you know, a listing of the results, you just search through the results to find your items. Very much like actually, you know, your, your catalog search. Um, again, the catalog search would mean looking at a lot of items from different databases, okay? Um, instead of just one database. Okay, so it depends on the situation and how much you need. Anything else? Oh, that's not for me.
Okay, so I'm looking at the time. Um, I went through a lot in this last hour, right? Um, we went to a lot of places, you know, the different databases, different books, making use of the library catalog. Um, I hope that everyone uh, remembers, <laughs> uh, but the, the point is, you know, we are doing this recording and my contact information is here. So um, this is not a test for you to have to remember everything. Um, you always have help. Um, just, you know, send me an email and say, okay, uh, I, I'm trying to get into, you know, that database. I don't know what the database was. That's what I'm for.